Is it legal to start a frog army? Oh my god, this is so stupid. <laughs> Many of you are asking, what is this video about? Let me catch you up to speed. Let's meet our protagonist. We're going to call him the Frog Army General. The Frog Army General notices some frog eggs in a shallow pond. He realizes the pond with these eggs is drying out, so he decides to take the eggs home in order to give them a better chance of hatching. You know what? I'm just going to let the Frog General tell us what's going on. Days ago, I collected frog spawn out of a puddle drying up. I'm planning to create the biggest frog army. And this is an update on the frog spawn. They are in a plastic container until I finish the pond. And tomorrow, I will go garden center for the habitat. So you can see at this point, he has rescued the frogs from the drying up pond. He has brought them to his own home and he has changed his intentions from just rescuing these frogs to creating a frog army is this enough to create a frog army or do i need more you know it's really funny that he uh insinuated that he might need more frogs because um that's exactly what he did he then proceeds to go and get more frog eggs and when i mean more frogs i mean hundreds of thousands of eggs i'm not kidding imagine just seeing thousands of frogs hopping everywhere Maybe I can save Ukraine with all these frogs. Mr. President, the TikTok user Finn Frog has said that he has developed a frog army and is ready for war. What? Sir, apparently he has hatched a million frogs and they are ready for combat. Uh, no. Hey man, I told him about the frog army. He's just not interested. So yesterday, when I collected thousands of frog spawn and added them to my pond, I found one single egg in the bucket what didn't make it into the pond. And I had a idea. This one can be the president of the frog army. And can you suggest a name for the president? Don't worry, it can live out of water as long as it's moist. So yeah, the president can live in this spare tank on his own with rain water in. Mr. President, since you rejected their offer, they have developed their own frog president. Yeah, I told him you had your own president now, and um, I don't know what to tell you. He's still not interested. So today I saved lots of frog spawn again, and I saved another 10 clutches for the army of frogs today. And in one clutch, there is 4,000 frog eggs, and I have 40,000 frog eggs for today. So he went back again and he got another 40,000 frog eggs. Yesterday, I got 16 clutches. So I have 100,000 frog eggs all together in just one day. So far- So, I stand corrected. 100,000 frog eggs in a day. Day three of the frog army. So there is over 100,000 frog eggs now. Do you think I could save Ukraine with this frog army? Oh, I nearly forgot. Here's the update on the president. The water is very cold, and I found this information. So I will keep the president inside. I might need a bigger home and some friends. Mr. President, every day the frog army president grows stronger. I'm sorry, can you say that again? I didn't have my glasses on. The frog army president grows stronger. Oh my god. After six days, they are growing into a tadpole shape now. I already have plus 180,000 frog eggs. So here we go. Things are about to get good. Everything is starting to hatch. I was checking on the frog army to see that they have hatched out. Over 1,000 have hatched out. Not a lot, but within a few days, they will all be zooming around the pond. He has not stopped getting more tadpoles. The last official number we got was 160,000, but... That was over a week ago at this point, and um, it appears he's literally getting more eggs every single day. Day 21. At the back of the pond, they have all come to the shallow bit. Enjoying the sun, their gills have now disappeared. There was quite a lot of unfertilized frog eggs, but they will eat all that up. Look at all these little babies. I think I actually do have the biggest frog army in history. Frog army is two months old already and the pond needs a bit of a clean because the 1.4 million tadpoles are everywhere. 
1.4 million tadpoles. Now at this point in the video, we're going to actually discuss some legal issues with raising and hatching 1.4 million tadpoles. Now there might be some people in the comments who are going to say something like, hey Tom, there's no law that says you can't raise 1.4 million tadpoles. After all, this is America. And to that, I would say you're wrong. So here's an article about the situation. The TikTok user has formed a frog army that is reportedly enslaving the neighborhood. As you can imagine, hatching 1.4 million frogs might be a problem regardless of the species because just naturally in nature, not all of these eggs are supposed to make it. Maybe even just 1% of the eggs. I don't know what the success rate of hatching frogs are, but not certainly 100%. And uh, on top of that, apparently these frogs are an invasive species. Unfortunately, thin frog may underestimate the magnitude of the problem. Biologists warned that the dangers of picking up random frogs in the first place is thin frog has no idea if these eggs are an invasive species. An invasive species is one that causes ecological or economic harm in the area. It is not native. According to the National Ocean Service, it has the potential to harm the area's resources as well as other animals. Additionally, this could also be a protected species that requires special permits to handle due to its rarity and endangered status. It's possible that you are causing havoc. Furthermore, having so many frogs in such a small space could cause disease. And because Thin Frog does not appear to know what kind of frogs these are, he does not know what kind of conditions the frogs require to survive. So pretty much General Thin Frog has put his entire local neighborhood on the brink of a uh, ecological disaster. The ecological, ecological, an ecological disaster. And on top of almost certainly violating a whole bunch of criminal statutes, he's probably gonna get sued. Finally, after three months, they are trying to get out the water and now froglets. Frog army of 1.4 million frogs coming. This is what they were three months ago. But now since they nearly frogs, I have to put lots of rocks so they can get out. So in less than a week, there will be over 10,000 frogs and the tadpoles will take a couple more weeks. So I've pulled up the definition of the tort of nuisance. A private nuisance is when the plaintiff's use and enjoyment of her land is interfered with substantially and unreasonably through a thing or activity. So the famous example of a private nuisance case actually has to do with smell. Let's say I'm Farmer Tom. Farmer Tom has a beautiful farm and everything is fine and dandy. And then next door, a factory opens up and it's a factory that smells bad. I don't know what factory smell bad. It's a paper mill. Paper mill smell really bad actually. And suddenly because the paper mill is right next to Farmer Tom's farm, Farmer Tom can no longer enjoy his farm because every time he is outside or even inside, even every time he's on his farm, all he can do is smell this terrible smell. He has lost the enjoyment use of his property. So even though Farmer Tom is on his farm and technically nothing has been touched on his farm by the factory, he can still sue the factory for nuisance because the factory smell has clearly devalued Tom's state on the farm. Now, obviously, this could be used in a whole bunch of different instances as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be smell. Another example could be light. Imagine if you're trying to sleep and your neighbors every night shine a huge light through your window. And no matter what you do, you cannot get this light to stop penetrating through the window. That would also be considered a nuisance. And I don't think it's any leap of the imagination to assert that having a frog army in your neighborhood is going to be a nuisance. This is exactly what I was talking about. Look at this. Imagine if this was your home. You can't go outside without letting hundreds of frogs in. A person in my neighborhood. Do 
you remember what life was like before the 1.4 million frogs were hatched? Oh, you mean the time in our life where 20 frogs didn't run into our house every time we opened up the door? Why don't we just move? Let's get out of here. Honey, that's a great idea, except we can't because nobody will buy this house because there are 1.4 million frogs in the neighborhood. <laughs> Do think this was my fault because of my giant frog army. Of course it's your fault. Now I have a million frogs what took over my garden and all the neighbors follow to see them get giant. So that's where we're at in the story. We are now currently waiting for the frogs to quote unquote, get giant you know we've watched a lot of dumb people do dumb things on this channel um and usually i give some advice like the following rule number one don't do anything illegal rule number two if you're going to do something illegal don't film yourself doing it rule number three if you film yourself doing something illegal don't post it on the internet now in this particular situation i don't know how this would have worked out if he didn't film this journey would he have gotten caught surely the neighborhood would have still experienced the 1.4 million frogs now before anybody says anything i am not agreeing with the frog general i think this is might be the stupidest thing i've ever seen i would be absolutely furious if i lived anywhere near this person but would he have gotten caught how would everybody have known if he was the person spawning these frogs additionally the whole commentary about purposely trying to build a frog army shows intent or at the very least extreme recklessness for his behavior and he will probably be found responsible for any ecological 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 and economic damages that 1.4 million frogs cause so even though i'm not this person's lawyer and this isn't legal advice he gets a knowledge hammer don't raise a frog army Mr. President, the frog president will see you now. 